Everybody wave your hand and thank God for grace tonight. Wondrous grace. Spectacular grace. Extraordinary. Incredible grace. It helped me. It touched me. It fixed me. It blessed me. It changed me. A witness. Lord, we thank you. And he was coming in for the kill God stepped in in a miracle of mercy And he gave me The witches tried to hit me The devil tried to curse me My past tried to steal Everything God wanted to do in my life When justice demanded that I give up and die Mercy stepped in and said I'll give you another chance Thank you for it Thank you for the grace that fixed you up That brought you out a second chance. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness in here? Somebody's living in it. Somebody's driving in grace. Somebody's wearing grace. Dressed up in God's grace. Walking in God's grace. Stepping in God's grace.
Praise the Lord, everyone. We gather tonight in Jesus' name for Bible study. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. If we're power packed with the word of God, the likelihood of sin squeezing in through the cracks is very, very difficult. So let us exercise in the word of the Lord again this evening. If you remember last Bible study, we came close to finishing chapter 7 of the book of Matthew. We spent some time dealing in chapter 7 with verses 13 and 14. And now I want us to note, we may refer back to verse 13 and 14, but I want you to notice now verse 24 down through 29. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. We have two foundations to consider. And I think that's important. And it brings to mind some other things as we look at the two foundations. Jesus is a wise master builder as well as a wise teacher. And I want you to know after we give ourselves to the Lord, we need to have a plan about building in Christ Jesus. But first of all, I see something here, and that is two ways, and it kind of comes from last week's lesson about two ways. And in verse number 13, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Two ways. And I'm just kind of pulling from last week's lesson even to teach this week's lesson. And a scripture comes to mind out of Psalm 1. Psalm 1 and 1. Again, it speaks about two ways. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Then he says, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. There are two ways. We can't get around the Lord. We cannot do something 
that he doesn't know about. There are no surprises with God. There's not a multiplicity of ways. And please, don't believe it when they say, you know, we're all going to the same place. We're all serving the same God. No, we're not. There's only one way to God. Didn't he say, I am the way? Yes, he did. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's the right way, and then there's the wrong way. Interesting enough, in the first testament, or in the first century church, there weren't the elaborate signs out in front of the church. Well, first of all, th their church was in their home or in the catacombs or in the wooded areas or in the caves. They hid to worship God. So they called them of the first century church people of the way or referred to them as that way. But Jesus said, I am the way. So let us look at this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Ah, uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I don't want to walk, stand, or sit in the wrong place. I don't want to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor do I want to stand in the way of sinners, nor do I want to be seated with the scornful, the mockers. Amen. Those that mock and criticize the church or people who really want to serve God. I don't want to go that way. The way I want to go is with the Lord. So the first item in these first verses speak of walking with God. It says, but his delight, and this is the reward, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Any person that serves the Lord, there will be times when you walk or skip through your house with your mind on Jesus. And there's nothing like being at peace with the Lord. This is one of the benefits of walking with Jesus. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of the Lord. And in his law or in his word doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God rewards us as we walk with him. It's important to know also, if there's an item where you're trying to overcome, the longer you walk with God, the longer you use his word, you become an overcomer. When was the last time you thought to yourself, well, I don't play jacks anymore. You just grew out of it. You don't remember the day that you used to curse and swear and then you stopped. You just grew away from it. I like this. But then he speaks about the other way. He said, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. That's going to be an awful day for so many individuals that are not walking with God today and will never make up their mind to walk with God. They will not be able to avoid the judgment. Amen. Amen. Somebody might say, well, you've never been judged. Oh, yes, I have. My Bible tells me that judgment first starts at the house of God. 
when I first stepped into the church, when I first made my way to God, the judgment of my past sins began to take place. I'm glad to be saved. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment of sinners or nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. I like this. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This goes along with the two ways that are spoken of in Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. There is a broad way, and please be careful of wholesale salvation. You can be told you can do anything that you want to do if you just come to the Lord and give your life to him, not so. When a person comes to the Lord and is born again, I mean baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance, the Lord allows you to grow in him, and you grow away from the frivolous things, the carnal things, and you discover a life of holiness and living right. I remember when I was a child in the Sunday school, they taught us, the older ladies in the church taught us the song, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. What does that mean? You have to do more than just come to the Lord. There are things that you put out of your life. There are ways that you discontinue because you want to walk in victory with Jesus Christ. He said in verse number 14, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So it's important if you want to say right here, it's okay, that your God must be a narrow God, but he speaks that way. He said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. If you want to say Jesus is narrow, that's okay. If you want to say this preacher is narrow, that's all right. I want to walk close to Jesus. And I can't walk close and be satisfied in him with all of the paraphernalia of the world hanging off of me. This is a close walk. You can't expect it to be a broad way. And you can kick up your carnal heels and do what you please, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. It's a way of holiness. Because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Well, God's few is enormous because it will be the collection of all of those that have given themselves to the Lord. And it brings us to the text that we started off with tonight. Uh, Psalm 1 and 1 through 6 it's about two ways. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 13 and 14, it's about two ways. And then Matthew 24 through 27, it speaks about two foundations. One must examine what kind of foundation are you on. Note what Jesus said. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, it should be read in your Bible. That's when Jesus is talking. And doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Now this is not 
a small pebble. This is on a massive rock. The same rock that Jesus said, Amen. I will build my church upon a rock. That's the kind of rock that is referred to here. If you build your spiritual life on something other than Jesus Christ, down will be the fall of it. And there will be great destruction and great disappointment. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. I was in New York one time and I saw the huge bridges from the mainland to the island. And those huge pillars of sandstone, they went beneath the water. They didn't just plant those huge stones upon the sand underneath the water, but they dug down deep to bedrock. And then they put those pillars on bedrock, massive rock. And Jesus is the massive rock. Amen. And he said the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Now we may have to go through some things, people of God, such as the scourge that we're dealing with in these last days. And it will batter some of us. It will hurt and maim many of us. But at the end, if your life is upon the rock, which is Jesus, God will take us through. God will give us a testimony. I remember as a child in the church, I heard one of the deacons testify, and the people shouted and rejoiced because of what he said. And as a youngster, I said, I want a testimony like that. I really didn't know what I was saying. In order to have a testimony of any quality, you're going to go through something. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. But your house won't fall because you're built upon a massive rock. Your testimony won't dwindle because your life is built upon a firm foundation. But note this. Verse number 26, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. We got to pay close attention to what Jesus is saying. If we let it go through one ear and out the other, we'll never prosper. But we've got to meditate upon it night and day. We must be encouraged. We must get our nourishment from his word. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon what? The sand. Anytime you build your house upon the sand, it's going to give way. Some of you have built little castles on the seashore in the sand. As long as the tide was out there, Everything was all right. But you looked at it and thought that it was so nice, you didn't want to tear it down, and you left it. But by and by, the tide came in. And as the tide struck it, it tumbled down. Sand can't take the test. A frivolous life, frivolous foundation will not hold you up and your testimony. It takes being planted upon the word of God, upon Jesus Christ himself. And when the floods come and the winds blow and it begins to beat up against your life, you won't fail if you're planted on Christ. But if your life is built on sand, 
absolutely it will crumble so easily. Ah, it might be tight, but it's right. Absolutely. You're going to pay something in order to walk with God. But the songwriter says, it pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. So it's important for us, if we're going to do this thing, do it right. Do it right. And that's important. Can I t ask you to turn uh, to another passage of Scripture? And it's in the Gospel of St. John. And that is chapter number 14. Those first six verses are beautiful, but I refer to verse number six. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. There isn't another God. They used to call apostolics Jesus only because we didn't believe and still don't believe in the Trinitarian doctrine. They called us Jesus only. Well, who else is there? Besides Jesus, his name carries salvation. Amen. And Jesus is saying in these few verses of chapter 14, when you see me, you see the Father. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, I love it. Scripture says, is it Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 9? Amen. That in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now you'll never find Trinity in your Bible. It's not there. Yet it's one of those words that men hold high. There are not three separate and distinct gods. There's only one God. And his name is Jesus. He's the father in creation. He's the son in redemption because he, he died at Calvary. He's the Holy Ghost in regeneration. One songwriter said, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. The only God we'll ever see is Jesus. Heart fixer, mind regulator. Amen. It's Jesus all day long. He died for us. Not only did he die, I failed to make mention, he made everything. Just check out John and chapter 1, those early Verses of chapter number one, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Don't miss verse three. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And verse number 14 says, And the Word was made flesh. If that isn't Jesus all day long, I don't know what it is. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So what's happening? John is decreasing. That Jesus might increase. He's everything. If you go through this world and you don't discover who Jesus is, you've missed everything. Does it matter if your accounting is chuck full of certificates of deposit 
and you've invested your money wisely and your house is paid for and your health is good, none of that makes any difference. If you don't know who Jesus is, I'm glad I know him. Not just about him, but I know him in the pardon of my sins. So I can say, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. What are you building on? There's only two ways. Either you're building upon Christ, which is a solid rock, or you're building on sand. There are two foundations. Sand does not last in the storm, but being platted upon a firm foundation upon Jesus, the rock, you will go through. Your testimony will stand. You will prove faithful unto the end. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. Look full in his wonderful face. Then the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Let's pray now. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you have sent your word into our lives and you've changed us from the bottom to the top. You truly picked us up and turned our lives around and established our goings. And for this, we say thank you. We pray now for men and women everywhere that are going through this terrible scourge, this virus. Lord, stretch forth your hand and bless those in the hospitals whose fevers are burning up. Quench it in Jesus' name. Let your blood prevail. Turn those situations around. May somebody know the touch of God in their lives. Not only bless them physically by healing them, but Father, bless them spiritually by saving them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.